your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David! David! You know he isn't home at this hour. Well, I just called on the chance he might have been home, Mama. Not unless he was sick. Well, it's a very important occasion in our lives. He might have been here. Aren't you forgetting that he knows nothing about this important occasion? If anything were wrong with him, I would know about it. Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. I didn't say there was anything wrong with me. Only if David were going to have a baby, I'd know about it. David were going to have a baby, the whole world would know about it. But I know what you mean, and David apparently is going to have a baby. Only he doesn't know it yet. That's David now, I'll bet you. Stay where you are. I'll answer it. You will not. You'd spill the beans right off. And this is something I want to tell him myself. I would not spill the beans, as you put it. Well, if you're not going to answer it... You're impossible. Darling! Oh, it's you, Bertha. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Norton. How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling fine. Fritz told me. Told you what? That you were not feeling well. Oh, that. I feel fine now. It's wonderful news. I'm so happy. I'm so happy, too. Why are you so happy? About the baby. Hello, Mrs. Brown. I bet you're happy, too. I don't get it. How could Fritz know? How could you know even Dr. Williams wasn't sure? He sent me to another doctor. I bet you 20 cents. What is this, a conspiracy? I feel a little dizzy. And Mama knows, and Fritz knows, and Bertha knows. And the medical profession says, wait and see. Oh, doctors, about babies, they have to be told. Is it not so, Mrs. Brown? Well, it's nice to have them confirm your hunches. You were very smart, Mrs. Norton. The spring is such a nice time to have a baby. Very smart. Of course, any time is a nice time. But the spring, I like best. I feel very much left out of this. As if I were a time clock or something. Set for spring. Mr. Norton will be so glad. Is there anything I can do? Bertha, there is nothing the matter with me that time won't fix. Bertha, you give me a great sense of security, knowing that at least one wise head on a very capable set of shoulders will be around my daughter. The way you two talk. You think I wasn't old enough to have a baby? I think you are old enough. While I go now, if you need me, call me. (laughs) Good night, Bertha. Thank you. She's a good woman. I don't know what we'd have done without Bertha and Fritz. Mama, what is all this nonsense about doctors? What nonsense? Dr. Williams brought me into the world and took care of me for 18 years. 19. All right, 19. Then when I'm going to have a baby, he suddenly doesn't know enough. Has to send me to Dr. Rowland. You think the business had suddenly got complicated in one generation. Well, Dr. Rowland is a specialist. But there's nothing so special about having babies. I mean, everybody does it. Well, he seems like a good man. A good man, good... <laughs> You know, there are two kinds of people in your world, Mama. Good, and then just people. And he's Julia's doctor. Has been for years. Then he can't be a baby specialist. Being Julia's doctor isn't any recommendation to me. Julia's never had a baby. (laughs) Julia isn't as lucky as you are. I am lucky, aren't I? Very. And very remarkable. There's one other thing I didn't like about Dr. Rowland. One other? What is it you don't like about him? Well, he wasn't as interested or as excited about me as Dr. Williams. Oh, well, perhaps the novelty has worn off for him. Mm. Now, uh, you're feeling perfectly all right, aren't you? Of course. Why? Because I'm going to run along. I'll stop and see you first thing in the morning. Aren't you going to stay for supper? Nice supper like I'm going to make? I have a home, and I have food in my own icebox. And I'm not going to stay for a nice supper like you're going to make. But at a time like this? Particularly at a time like this. You and David are entitled to be alone. I am not going to be a mother-in-law. You are not a mother-in-law. 
except legally? And I'm not going to be one except legally. You sound like you just live for the day you could unload me under somebody else's hand. Exactly. Mama, how, how'll I tell him? You won't have to. He'll take one look at your face and know. What's the matter with my face? Nothing. It just looks as if God had suddenly bent and kissed you. Well, tell David to be a good father to my grandchild. Wait a minute, Mama, will you? What? Say, don't mention to David anything about my fainting this morning. He'd only worry and... You're a nice girl. I'm glad I brought you into the world. I'm glad you did, too. Thanks, Lode. You're very welcome. <laughs> Well, hello, Mama. You just arriving? I'm just leaving. Well, change your mind. My mind's firmly made up. I have decided not to be a mother-in-law. You two girls look like you've been up to something. I haven't been up to anything. Well, she... She wouldn't stay. Don't you even kiss me? You don't deserve it. Where were you all afternoon? I tried to telephone you from 4 o'clock on, but... I, I was out. What'd you want? gathered you were out. I don't know what I wanted. It wasn't very important, I guess, but when you didn't answer, I got worried. That was nice. It wasn't nice. Where were you? Guess. I know you went to the auction sale, but after that, where did you go? Say, what did the bookcase bring at the auction? I'm not even interested in the bookcase. Just what are you interested in at this point, may I ask? What makes you think I'm interested in anything? You didn't buy the bookcase back again, did you? I didn't. You have a funny look. Mama said you'd see it. What kind of a look? Very guilty. That's not the right answer. Come on, come on. Out with it. I can't come out with it. You have to guess. Is... Is Mama in on this, too? Mm, very indirectly. I knew I shouldn't have trusted you two out alone. Now, what have you bought this time? I haven't bought anything. It was a gift. Oh. oh, a gift. You did go to the auction sale. No, this was a, a private party. A very nice man. Another white elephant, I suppose. Mm, not an elephant. You're getting close, though. A private party, a very nice man, not an elephant. Say, what is this, 20 questions? It shouldn't take 20. I don't feel like playing games. How much did you pay for it? I, I got it on the installment plan. Payments to be made for as long as I live. All right. Where is it? Oh, it won't be delivered for ages. Now, look, darling, what is all this mysterious business? David, can't you guess? Look, dear, I had an awfully long day. Now, stop clowning. David, this scene is all wrong. I'm not clowning. Darling, there are tears in your eyes. What is it? Oh, David, because I'm so happy. I'm so happy I can hardly breathe. I'm probably being very obtuse. If... Look, darling, begin at the beginning. The very beginning? No, not at the very beginning, just at the beginning. The beginning was that I loved you. And you loved me. Now can you guess? Darling. Yes. You, you're fooling. I'm not. Well, why didn't you tell me before? I didn't know before. You mean it all happened while I was downtown today? Yes. What happened? I was a little dizzy. Well, I'm a little dizzy too, but... That doesn't mean I'm going to become a mother. Darling, I went to see Dr. Williams this afternoon. And he said... He said he didn't know. Well, then maybe... He, he sent me to another doctor, Dr. Rowland. Julia's baby doctor. I didn't know Julia had a baby doctor. Well, what did he say? He said, yes, it was true. I, I can't believe it. Are you all right? He said I was sound as a nut. I don't want any remarks about that either. Well, it's an awful temptation, but... Oh, darling, you're the sweetest nut I ever knew. <laughs> this, uh, doctor, what's his name? Is he a, oh, uh, is he a good doctor? Yes, Dr. Williams says he's the very best. 
I was afraid he was going to be awfully expensive, so I asked him to quote me a rate. To what? To quote me a rate. Mama was awfully embarrassed. Well, I should think she would be. Look, darling, with a, a baby, you just don't count the cost of things like doctors and whatnot. That's where you're wrong. With babies, it's just where you have to begin to count the costs. There'll probably be ever so many whatnots. Anyway, it pays to be businesslike. Yes. Oh, he didn't seem to mind. He said he wished more patients would be that direct. Yes. I could see that he kind of had Julia in the back of his mind, being my sister-in-law and everything. And You know, that wouldn't have been fair. I mean, for us to pay the penalty for Julia and Hartley being rich. Would it? I am waiting. Sooner or later, you will come to the point. So, I mentioned that we'd be throwing a whole lot of business his way, what with all the children we'll be having. And... One at a time, please. I went into that, too. Into what? Into twins. It'll be the same price, $300. That's not much. You multiply that by six, and it's an awful lot. Oh, I forgot. Six is a big number. Say, this, this calls for a celebration. What would you like to do? Shall we, shall we go out someplace for dinner? Mm. Would you rather we stayed home? Just the two of us? Mm-hmm. Who are you going to telephone? I've got a call to make. Hello. Hello. Yes, it's I. Now, I want you to listen to what I have to say. I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, you sound so manly. Is that Kelly you're talking to? I am not talking to Kelly. I'm talking to your mother. Yes, yes, that's what I said, Mrs. Brown. A very large bone to pick. What are you, an unnatural mother? Your daughter is going to have a baby, and you run gaily off without a thought in the world. A wolf wouldn't do a thing like that. No. <laughs> No, and a duck wouldn't either. You're awfully zoological about Mama. <laughs> so, you don't want to be a mother-in-law. Well, that's just too bad. This is one son-in-law who won't let you evade his responsibilities. No, I, I say Figaro to your lamb chop. I say throw it back in your ice box and come over here and have supper with us. What do you think we want with you? We're, we're going to spend the evening alone, the three of us. Goodbye and hurry along, Grandma. Well, I gave her a piece of my mind. Doesn't want to be a mother-in-law, doesn't she? I'll, I'll learn her. Darling. What? You know, our baby is going to have the sweetest, the most understanding, the kindest, the gentlest, the most wonderful father a baby ever had. I was smart to have picked him up. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When Dad and Brother want a breather in the course of the day's work, they stop at the familiar red cooler and have an ice-cold Coca-Cola. Then they work refreshed. Why don't you follow their example? Keep plenty of Coke on ice and stop during housework to open an ice-cold bottle. No reason why you shouldn't enjoy the pause that refreshes, too. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>